So if you've thought about opening a lifetime ISA in the UK, you will know it's a fantastic vehicle to save because you actually get a government bonus on top. So not only is it tax free saving because it's part of our investment allowance every single year, currently up to £20,000 can be saved in various flavours of ISA. So perhaps you're saving for your first home or even wanting to save for retirement. A lifetime ISA is a great choice. There's a couple of providers of them in the UK right now. In this video, I want to show you how to set up a lifetime ISA, take you through the entire process on Hargraves Lansdowne. Hi there, welcome back to the Mama Fur Fur channel. My name is Jennifer. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step tutorial. I'm actually going to go through it with you how to set up a lifetime ISA with Hargraves Lansdowne. Now, there's only a couple of providers in the UK that offer this particular flavour of ISA. An ISA is an individual savings account. We have £20,000 per person currently, based on the current tax year as I make this video, where we can save, invest, grow our money tax free, which means that anytime we put money in, up to £20,000 per year, what we make as growth or dividends or profit, that then can be withdrawn tax free. Fantastic. One of the few places where we are actually not taxed, it appears in the UK. And particularly if you're a high tax payer or you're just wanting to be a bit smarter with your money, it's a fantastic vehicle to use. Now I have an investment ISA as part of our money strategy and that's for investing in the stock market. And they brought out this new variant called a lifetime ISA a couple of years ago, where it's the particular requirements of your first home you're saving towards, where they'll give you this bonus, or it can be used for retirement purposes. Purposes. Now you can withdraw your money if you want, but there will be a charge and usually you lose your bonus as well on top that the government gave you. So let's run through what is a lifetime ISA. Okay, very, very quickly, I'll show you on their website as well. You get up to £4,000 allowance per person that you can put into a lifetime ISA and then the government will give you 25% on top as a bonus. Now, depending on what you're investing or saving in, this particular one I'm using is going to be an investment lifetime ISA. That means I'm going to pick investments in the stock market. So not only am I going to get that bonus from the government, I'm going to also use funds, perhaps ETFs, to grow my money. Real companies will be investing with my money. Very similar to a pension where you're putting into funds and bonds and different things like that with the hope that you can grow your money above inflation because we want this to be something we can use as an income income in our retirement age or perhaps for your first home. So I'm not going to cover all the particular requirements of how you qualify, but let's just say it, you've got to be under the age of 40. You can then contribute up to the age of 50 and then you can get access to your money unless it is for your first home. Certain requirements on that which you can check out in more detail or its retirement age. So let's actually go through this. So the first things you need to be aware of are whoever you're using, you've got to be aware of what are you going to actually save or invest in your lifetime ISA. So we'll talk through fund choices. The other thing is be aware of charges, okay? Particularly with investments, and I'll talk you through with Hargraves Lansdowne, there are going to be charges for doing this because they're giving your money to institutes and you know, investment funds there's some admin involved, so it's not going to be fee free. So we have to understand that. So let's actually go into their website and see what we're looking at here. So Hargraves Lansdowne I'm using because my traditional platforms I use for my investment ISA, which is Vanguard, they don't offer a lifetime ISA at the moment. I also use eToro at the moment, as you know, for experimental portfolio. I can buy Bitcoin and all different things like that through them. They don't offer any type of investment ISAs or any kind of tax efficient options. So for me, I had to go and find someone to offer a lifetime ISA and I also had to trust that I liked what they could provide for me and what I can invest in. So their particular charges, if you come onto their pages for Hargraves Lansdowne, you can see depending on how much you're going to actually have in that fund, that will then be the monthly and yearly cost. So there's going to be an admin charge. Another thing to bear in mind is depending on what you pick to invest in, will be charged with Hargraves Lansdowne. So for example, if you're using index funds, they do not currently have a charge with Hargraves Lansdowne. However, if I was going to use ETFs or shares, ETFs are basically they act like shares, their funds in that way, you then have additional charges. So you have a buy and a sell charge. So be aware, whatever you're picking, you need to be sure, are you okay with the charges that you're going to face? So make sure you read all of those terms and conditions. Obviously, the more that you're going to be buying and selling, if you are using stocks or ETFs, 
be okay with those charges that you're actually going to face as well. The other great thing is, you know, you could actually want to reinvest automatically. They offer you that. Be aware that there is a charge potentially if it's not an accumulation fund, but we'll cover that in more detail. You also have to make sure that you've got enough money in your payment account to actually pay the charges. So once a quarter or once a month, you'll see that charge come out. Have cash there, you can put cash in, or sometimes they'll actually sell your shares to cover it. So just, you've got to keep an eye on this. I would even say every month, keeping an eye on what charges you've got, putting in the cash, or seeing what you want to do with it. And there's various types of admin charges, you know, if you want paper copies of your statements. So make sure you understand all the charges and fees before you sign up. Now they can also transfer in previous lifetime ISAs to their accounts as well. So you know if that's not something that you see this and you actually fancy using them instead, bear that in mind, they can actually transfer in current allowances that you're using elsewhere. A great place to look is also their frequently asked questions. You can obviously go into that. I'm 39 as I make this video, so I'm going to take the opportunity and open a lifetime ISA with you step by step so I can really maximise the free money. But it's all about what's right for you. Not everyone needs a lifetime ISA investment ISA. I'm using it now as part of a strategy to get that little bit of bonus on extra money, but of course it all counting towards my £20,000 per year. So whatever flavours you use, whatever works for you, just make sure you're using your tax effective options, whether it be investment ISAs, cash ISAs, lifetime ISAs, whatever works for you. Okay, so let's actually do this. I'm going to click on open a lifetime ISA, take about 10 minutes. You're going to go step by step through with me a little bit quicker, hopefully. Make sure you're okay with picking investments. You know you're doing and you are a UK resident and they call it as well when your bonus will be paid and we do know that you will face charges if you withdraw money from your lifetime ISA out with those two terms and conditions. Now right now during lockdown as I'm filming in 2021 you're not actually allowed to withdraw without charges so just bear in mind sometimes it changes that you can actually withdraw without any penalties. What we need to do this is our NI number hopefully you got that to hand and then either your debit card or bank card. The minimum amount is £25 if you're using bank details. Minimum amount is £100 if it's a debit card that you're opening your account with. So we're going to start the process now. I'm not an existing customer, so I click there. And then I'm going to put in all my details and this is going to be blurred out for you so you don't see any of my details. So the first option really that we have is how would you like to add in money to your lifetime ISA? You can add cash. That is obviously using a debit card. You can set up those monthly payments from £25. That's using your bank account. And then obviously you can add cash now and set up monthly payments. So completely within your control, how you would like to actually populate your lifetime ISA. I'm going to set this up on my bank account. I'm going to put £25 in to open it. And then I'll probably set up monthly payments just as I would do with any other investment investment portfolio account. So I fill out, I'm going to do 25 there and then this is all going to go blurred because this is me putting in my details. I've got my purse here and I'm going to put in my details now. And then you click open a lifetime ISA. And there we go, it said my monthly direct debit will be then created for me. I'm going to create a username. So the next section, you fill out some security questions that you want to set. I'm not going to show you those. Then we come out to how would you like income received in your account to be treated? So this is where you can decide do you want to automatically reinvest it, in which case there could be charges, or do you want it simply kept as cash? Now that will depend also on what type of fund or stock or ETF you're picking. Does it offer a dividend payment, a yield payment, or does it automatically reinvest? it for you. Now the one I'm going to show you that I'm going to pick is actually an accumulator fund so it gets reinvested automatically. So obviously whatever you're intending to pick then that influences it. So I'm actually just going to click that option right now. So then you fill out your bank details. Okay, next screen we come into is what funds do you want to actually put your lifetime ISA into? So you're going to have their big long list. I'm going to talk you through what I'm going to pick while I set up this, but really it's all about then you'd go and do your research and decide what you want to pick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one. I want to actually decide what I'm investing in right now. So what you can do is follow it through. You'll understand the key features. If you're investing in a fund or ETF, you're confirming we understand the key information about the fund. So it's hugely important. 
do your due diligence in the background. I always say, whatever you pick as your fund, know if there's any charges associated with it, know what you're investing in, and make sure it's something that backs up what you want to be investing in long term. For me, I go index funds and trackers, I go ETFs as well. That's the majority of our investments. I want it to be super simple and easy. I only want to log in once a month and just know that it's going along in the background. So I'm actually going to click on the fund, and what I'm going to show for you um, is the options. I'm going to go with a Vanguard one. So let me show you what I'm going to pick and I'll talk you through then what we can look at here. So I'm going to go for this one right here, which I believe is that one. Let me just click on that one and I'm going to do 25. So I've gone for a Vanguard and obviously you can decide what you want to invest in. I've put in 25 pounds. You can make it any amounts that you want. I'm going with the Vanguard ESG developed world all cap. Now it's an accumulator fund. And as you saw there, like if I type that in again, and I type in Vanguard, so you really can search for anything you want. It brought up the whole host of choices. They, they have pretty much so many options for you, you know, and it's really about knowing what all these terms mean. So let's very quickly go over. An accumulation fund means that in terms of Vanguard, when you receive dividend payments in that fund, so you know it could be dividends or the yield, whatever is contained in that fund, all those companies, it will automatically reinvest in that fund any any kind of dividend payout. So let's say you get 1% every quarter, that 1% would then automatically rebuy more of the fund. Income means that that 1% would come back to you as cash then for you to buy something else or decide what you're doing a withdrawal. So that's the difference. Accumulation means keep growing with any profits you make or any dividend payments. Income means you get the income and then decide what you're doing. Okay, so super easy for that. Okay, so I'm going to choose that one. The reason I'm going for that one, and I'll put you onto the financial information, it's this one right here, okay? So this one for me is, you know, it's a brand new fund. It's been less than a year it's been out, so that's what we'll talk through. But I'm hugely interested in ESG funds right now. It's not all about, for me, the maximum returns. It's actually about making sure my money is going with things that I support and what I would hope for the future as well. Tends to be ESG obviously have governance there so they're looking for environmental social governance they're looking at ways to have certain standards within how they run their business. Another thing is on Hargreaves Lansdowne and Vanguard as I'll show you they also have the companies displayed so that tells me what's in the fund. Make sure you know you go through it even look at the country weighting I'm good, I'm happy. I'm not going to go into too much detail about why I'm choosing this one, but this is on Vanguard's um, website as well. And for me, it's a decent fund. I'm happy to put my money in long term within it. So I'm going to choose that one. And then obviously you can decide if you want to add or you know do shares or whatever, you, and you just hit shares right there and put in whatever uh, share that you want to buy into instead. So same process, then we hit continue. And that's it. I have submitted my application. And obviously that took up less than 10 minutes, as you saw. The toughest choice is probably actually picking what you want to invest in. And for me, I use Vanguard for my investment ISA anyway. And it's natural for me to want a Vanguard fund. I like them. They're good. They're solid. They usually have consistent returns. They're managed very well. And so that equally on Hargreaves Lansdowne, I was happy to choose that. But it's straightforward. And that's how easy it is to open up a lifetime ISA with of Hargraves Lansdowne. Now, if you do fancy checking them out, this video is not sponsored by them. I just wanted to do this process with you to show you how to do it. You can go to their website down below in the description bar. And as always, if you're interested in more about investing, okay, so why did I pick that fund in particular? What's my strategy for investing? Please do check out some of my other videos. And in particular, why not check out my course that's actually mentioned down below? It's called Investing Made Simple, and it talks you through these building blocks how you decide what you're investing in, what are all these different terms that you should know before you pick a fund or a stock or an ETF. I talk you through that process. So it might be really valuable for you if you're wanting to get started on this investment journey. So thank you so much for watching today. Why not check out this video right here where I talk you through another similar topic. And also you can hit subscribe, follow my channel a little bit longer. You'll get notified whenever there's a new video. So thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you very soon.